وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى in this episode I want إن شاء الله تعالى to talk about the story of أم سليم and her child but before I mention the story of Umm Sulaim, this noble companion, this noble female companion, I first want to mention, inshallah ta'ala, the value of children to humans, and how valuable children are to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he placed in the heart of humans, Men, Allah Taala placed in their hearts the love of women. Allah also placed in the hearts of men and women the love of their children. Yani, the love of a child is something Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala placed inside us. Sometimes you find the most harshest, the most toughest, the most stubborn, the most hard-headed person, but when it comes to his children. He's so soft and so sweet and so easy going. This is something that you tend to find sometimes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tests His creation, the mu'mineen, the believers. As I mentioned in the previous episodes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test this iman. Do you think that you can just say, I'm a believer? And Allah is not going to test your iman. The person who is grounded and has true belief and Iman, when this test comes, it doesn't really shake him much. Rather, he blossoms. He glows and he shines in this trial and tribulation. The Prophet وسلم, he said, ما يزال البلاء بالمؤمن والمؤمنة في نفسه وولده وماله حتى يلقى الله وما عليه خاطئة. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَا يَزَالُ الْبَلَاءُ Calamities will be consistent and continuous to the believer. The believing man and the believing woman. بِالْمُؤْمِنِ وَالْمُؤْمِنَةِ The believing man and woman. And the test will occur في نفسي. Allah will test you in yourself, your health. Allah will test you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَوَلَدِهِ Allah will test you in your children. Wamali Allah will test you in your wealth, reduction of wealth. Allah mentions to us subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he's going to test us in many ways. He's going to test us by reducing our wealth. Allah will test us by taking away our health. Allah will test us by taking our children from us. And Allah tests you. And the reason for this is to, to see this Iman of yours. Is it real? Are you, are you a true believer? Or are you munafiq, just claiming Iman? That's why the hadith I mentioned, it says, ما يزال البلاء بالمؤمن والمؤمنتي. The test is consistent for the believing men and women. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu he told us, and this again, the second hadith I'm going to mention is going to show us the value that children have for us and how much they mean to us, but also the reward for it. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, إِذَا مَا تَوَلَدُ الْعَبْدِ قَالَ اللَّهُ لِمَلَائِكَتِي When a person loses his children and his children are taken from him, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he says to the angels, have you taken the soul of my slave's son or my slave's daughter? And my slave's child, have you taken the soul of my slave's child? Allah says to the angels. And he knows. 
فيقولون نعم دي انجلز وسي يس الله ذن سي سبحانه وتعالى قبضتم ثمرة فؤادي هاف يو تيكن ذا موست بيلوفد ذا موست بريشس ثينج تو هيم يعني ثمرة فؤاده مينز ذا موست فاليوبل ثينج تو ذيس بيرسون ذا ثينج ذات هي تشيريشز ذا موست اند ادمايرز ذا موست يو تيكن ذات فروم هيم يو ستريب ذات فروم هيم فيقولون ذا انجلز ويل سي نعم والله وي ديد فيقولوا اذن الله سيز تو ذا انجلز ماذا قال عبدي وات ديد ماي سليف سي when you took his child from him when you took from him ثمره فؤاده the most beloved the thing that he admires the most when you took that from him what did he say what was his response فيقولون they say حمدك واسترجعك oh wallah he praised you and he said inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un واسترجعك means he said inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he then says فيقول الله الله then says to the angels ابنوا لعبدي بيتا في الجنة وسموه بيت الحمد build a house in Jannah for my slave and call that house the house of praise يعني بيت الحمد what I want us to take from this is how Allah referred to the child to the parent ثمرة فؤاده The child is the most beloved thing to us. And if someone came up to you and said to you, I'll give you a million and give me a child, you say no. And a normal person, common sense, wouldn't give, out, give away his child. And it's the most valuable thing to a person. It means a lot to the person. Inshallah ta'ala, the third example I want to mention, how valuable children are. Because bef- I have to mention this to you, brothers and sisters. Before I mention the story of Umm Sulaim and her child, I have to mention the way the child is to us and how much we value the children. There were two women. كانت امرأتان معهما ابناهما And Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated in the Sahih a story that happened at the time of Dawood alayhi salam and the time of Sulaiman ibn Dawood. There were two women and they both had children. So one day, a wolf or a hyena, whatever translates correctly to the word a dip, came and took the child from one of the mothers. And he, one of the mothers lost her child because of a dip, a wolf or a hyena or a wild dog, whichever you call it. So when one of the white women lost their child, and it was the older one who lost the child, the older one said to the younger one, it's your child that the, the hyena took, or the wolf took. It's your child. And she tried to take, she's trying to take the child of the young one, the young woman. She said, you're, you're the one who lost. إِنَّمَا ذَهَبَ بِبْنِكِ The uh, dhib the, the has taken your child, not my child. The other one said, no, 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 it's your child that the, the wolf took. Both of them, they came to Dawood to judge between the two. And Dawood, he judged in favor of the older woman. He said, it's your child. The younger one wasn't happy because it was her child. It's her child. This woman is trying to take her child from her. So she wasn't happy with the judgment of Dawood salam. So what she did was, she went to Sulaiman. So they both went to Sulaiman. When they went to Sulaiman, the older one was thinking again, it's going to be in her favor. When they entered up onto Sulaiman, Sulaiman, he said, as soon as the issue was presented to him, Sulaiman ibn Dawood, and he said, Itini, bring me a sikin, bring me a blade. I will slip, split the child in half. I'll give you half and you take half. If you're both arguing over the child, bring me a blade, bring me a sword, bring me a sharp object. I'm going to split the child into half. I'm going to give you half and I'm going to give you half. The young one being the mother, the real mother, she looked at the situation. So the man is calling for a blade. He was calling for a sword. He wants to split the child in half. It's her child. She feels it. So what did she say? Let her hand. Don't do this. 
Yarhamukallah, may Allah have mercy upon you, Sulaiman. Don't do this. This child is hers. It's her child, just give it to her. The young one is saying it. Because what does she want? She's a mum. She doesn't want her child to be killed. As long as he lives. She said, no, 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 Suleiman. Do not kill the child. Let the older one have it. It's hers. Then Suleiman, this, is what, this was his test. This is, he, want, he did this to determine whose child it was. Suleiman then said, it's yours to the young one. Because a mother will only do that. A mother will never let her child be harmed. A mother will never, uh, she will never treat her child in a way that causes him pain and agony. But the Prophet ﷺ, one day, he pointed at a woman whilst he was with his companions, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This woman, she had lost her child. And because she lost her child, whenever she saw a child, she would think it was her child. And so she would grab the child and she would breastfeed it. And when she looks at it, when she wouldn't realize it's hers, she would grab another one. And she kept doing that. The Prophet Sallallahu said to the companions, Atadhununa, do you guys think that that mother would throw her child into the fire? Do you think that woman would, if she's her child, her son, her daughter, she would throw that child of hers in the fire? Do you think she would do that? The Sahaba, seeing how that woman felt and the way she was sad and the way she was breastfeeding other children, and they said, no, a messenger of Allah, she would never do that. Then the Prophet said, Allah is more merciful to the creation than the mother is to her child. So the, the mother and the father, the way they are towards their children, is something words cannot explain unless you have children. And our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a person whose heart is connected to the day of judgment, a person who realizes the insignificance, insignificance of this dunya and how low it is and how pathetic this dunya is. When he lost his son, Ibrahim, and he died, the Prophet وسلم, his eyes watered and he cried. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf was standing there. He said, even you are messenger of Allah? And he thought it wasn't allowed for the person to cry. And he thought it was prohibited for the person to cry. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, even you are crying. And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to the Prophet, the Prophet said to Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, This is a mercy. Allah places it in the heart of the creation. And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, tadma, The eyes, they water. And also, the heart feels sadness and sorrow. And we will not say except that which is pleasing to our Lord. That's all we're going to say. And Ibrahim, you're departuring. You leaving this world is bringing sadness to our hearts. It's hurting us. Nabiullah Muhammad is saying this. And Ibrahim, you leaving this world and departing from this world is causing sadness to our hearts. This now gives us brothers and sisters the feeling and understanding the value of children. And those who have it and have children, then they already know the bond of children and how they feel towards their kids. Now the story unravels, the story of Umm Sulaim. Each and every one of you, keeping in mind what I just mentioned, Let's listen to Umm Sulaim. Umm Sulaim is the mother of Anas ibn Malik. You all know the companion, the famous companion, Anas ibn Malik, who narrated many ahadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Anas ibn Malik, who served the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was a khadim for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for ten years. Anas ibn Malik, and he's from the Muktirin, the ones who narrated large quantity of ahadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His mother was Umm Sulaim. Umm Sulaim, she was married to Anas ibn Malik's father. And Anas ibn Malik's father is who? Malik. Umm Sulaim, when she presented Islam to her husband Malik, the father of Anas, she told him about Islam because she was interested in Islam. She wanted to take Islam. She told him about Islam and she said that 
inna hadha ar-rajula she means the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yuharrim al-khamr the nabi Allah muhammad he prohibits khamr she said and malik was very addicted to alcohol he was addicted to the consumption of alcohol she said to him the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he prohibits alcohol he says alcohol is haram um fan talaqa malik when he heard that he left medina and he went to Sham. When he went to Sham, he went there to drink alcohol. Fahalaka, and he died over there. So Umm Salim was out, with, she was without a husband. One day, Abu Talha came to her. So she has Anas ibn Malik for her pre, from a previous marriage. Abu Talha came. When Abu Talha came, he spoke to her, he conversed with her, he asked her questions. The conversation that took place between them is what I'm going to mention. When he spoke to her, he talked to her, he said to her, I am interested in you and you are a, a, a person who I would love to take uh, as a wife. I'd love to take you as a wife. She looked at Abu Talha, Umm Sulaim. She looked at Abu Talha and she said, Ya Abu Talha. She said, Abu Talha, ma mithluka yurad. Someone like you should not be turned away. Someone like you, I should not reject. I don't think you're worthy of rejection. You're a high, noble person. You're a gentleman. You're a noble individual. But you are a disbeliever. You are a kafir. I am a woman who believes in Allah. I'm a Muslim woman. It's not befitting for me to get married to you. It's not right for me to get married to you. Umm Sulaim, she clarifies everything to Abu Talha. First of all, she says, you are a noble person. Someone like you should not be turned, turned away. Someone like you should not be rejected. But I'm a Muslim and you're a kafir. This is something that doesn't work. It can't work. I can't marry on the premises of you being a disbeliever. Abu Talha, he said to her, I have wealth. I have as-safra wal bayda. I have silver and gold. Yani I have dinar and dirhams. I've got wealth. I'm rich. Whatever you want to mention, I'll give it to you. Second thing, he now presents money to her. Brothers and sisters, sisters specifically, watch the steps that Umm Sulaim takes. Brothers, look at what Umm Sulaim is doing here. Present the situation of Umm Sulaim to the reality of today and the world that we're living in today, the situation that we're seeing today. Umm Sulaim, as soon as he mentioned wealth and finance, she said, I don't have no desire for that. I don't care about your wealth. I don't care about the money you possess. But what I would say to you is, if you accept Islam, my dowry is your Islam. You just have to become a Muslim. And I will make my dowry Islam. I don't want money from you. Abu Talha then said, okay, what do I do? How do I become a Muslim? She said, go to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Abu Talha walked onto the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he entered and the Prophet ﷺ was with his companions. When the Prophet saw Abu Talha from far, he said, this face of this man looks like he's coming to take Islam. Abu Talha came and he accepted Islam. There is no woman whose dowry is better than the dowry of Umm Sulaim. Her dowry was the Islam of a noble companion, Abu Talha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Look at the position of this woman. How noble she is, radiallahu ta'ala anha. So her and Abu Talha got married. She became his wife. They remained together. They stayed together. One day, Abu Talha's child that he had from Umm Surayn became very sick. They had a child. The child became very sick. So Abu Talha done wudu at Salatul Fajr. 
when he did his wudu for Salat al-Fajr, Abu Talha, when he was leaving, he was saddened by the illness of his child that he had for Umm Sulaim. He was hurt by it. He was saddened by it. So he went to the masjid. He prayed with the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he stayed there for until uh, Salat al-Duha. Then he came home. He prayed Salat, he came home, spent time with his family, then he went out again and he prayed Salat al-Dhuhr with the Prophet and he came back after Dhuhr and then he slept for a little bit. And then he woke up and then he went to Salat al-Asr, he went to the Masjid again, he came back until Salat al-Isha. Salat al-Isha, Abu Talha got ready for Salat al-Isha and he left to go to the Prophet all this time, his son is very sick and he's ill. And he's sad. He's spending so much time with the Prophet ﷺ. Maybe find um, some reassurance, something that can bring tranquility to his heart. Whilst he's at Salat al-Isha, his son passes away. He dies. He comes home after Salat al-Isha. When he comes home, he asks his wife, Umm Muslim, he says, how, how is my son, son? How's my son doing? She said to him, your son hasn't complained. And now he's tranquil. Which is true. He's not complaining because he's dead. And he's tranquil. So Abu Talha understood it as to mean he got better now. He did understand it. And Umm Sulaim instructed the people in the house, no one tell him about the death of his child. She said, I will break the news to him. Subhanallah. Please, sisters and brothers, ponder the way that she's keeping her composure, the way she is. Abu Talha slept. And when he went to sleep, feeling better this time, being told that his son is uh, not complaining and is in a state of tranquility, Abu Talha went to sleep. When Abu Talha went to sleep, Umm Sulaim, what she did was, she beautified herself, she placed perfume on herself, she made herself very, very beautiful. And this woke up Abu Talha and they had an intimate relationship. When they had an intimate relationship, Umm Sulaim, she said the following words to Abu Talha. She said, Ya Abu Talha, she gave him a scenario, a hypothetical scenario. She said, if a person borrowed another person something, someone borrowed someone something, and the person who borrowed it asked for the thing that he borrowed to be given back to him, he wants his things back. The ones who were borrowed the items, who were given the items, do they have the rights to say to the person who borrowed them the items, no, I'm not going to give it back to you. Do they have the rights? Abu Talha, he responded and he said, لا. no, they don't have the rights to. قالت, he then said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَىٰ كَانَ عَارَكَ مِنَكَ Allah, he loaned you your son. He borrowed you your son. If that can be said. Now he has taken back what was his. So I tell you, she said, فحتسب. Hope, reward from Allah, wasbir and be patient. The minute she said those words, Abu Talha became extremely angry. He said to her, you hid this information from me. You then made me fall into sexual relationship with you. I, I enjoyed myself whilst my son was dead. He became extremely angry. And then the Salatul Fajr time came and he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he told the Prophet about what happened and what took place. He informed the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Barakallahu lakuma. Ma Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plays baraka for you both that sexual relationship that you just had last night. May Allah bring something out of that. May Allah put baraka in it for you. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave from that, from that intimate relationship that night, Umm Sulaim became pregnant and she had a child for him. And as soon as that child was born, Umm Sulaim, she, she gave birth to the child. Abu Talha commanded Anas ibn Malik to go to the Prophet وسلم, and take the child to him. And the newborn child to the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet, the child was brought to him and the Prophet took, his, took a date and a bit of his saliva in there and he put it in the mouth of the, the newborn child of Umm Sulaim. And the first thing that that child of Umm Sulaim and Abu Talha took was the Prophet وسلم, something that came from his blessed mouth. Imam al-Bukhari narrated in his Sahih that Sufyan ibn Uyayna said that a man from the people of Ansar said, فَرَأَيْتُ لَهُ مَا تِسْعَةَ أَوْلَادٍ Umm Sulaim and Abu Talha, they had nine children. And Allah gave them nine children. كُلُّهُمْ قَدْ قَرَأَ الْقُرْآنِ all of them were Huffar. Nine children that came from Umm Sulaim and Abu Talha were all Huffar. And this was because of the dua of the Prophet. He said, May Allah put barakah in what comes from this. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, Umm Sulaim has truly shown us the, the real meaning of Al Iman Billah. To believe in Allah, the effects that Iman has when it comes to someone's heart. Yani that it changes someone, that it makes a person's life change. She didn't, in any way, shape, or form, the minute she lost her child, she didn't. She didn't slap her cheeks, she didn't rip her clothes, she didn't say foul language. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, Laysa minna malatama al khududa wa shakka al juyuba. The Prophet said he's not from amongst us, the one who slaps his cheeks, who rips his clothes, and comes with actions of the pre Islamic uh, actions. And the Ahlul Jahiliya, what they used to do. That person is not from us, the Prophet said. Umm Sulaim did not do any of that. The composure, the way she kept herself together. The reason is because when she was tested, when Allah chose to test her and put her through that trial and tribulation, her Iman was very strong. She was grounded. It was like a mountain on a windy day. The mountain doesn't move because of the wind. It doesn't move. She didn't move because of it. The way the dunya didn't mean anything to her when Abu Talha presented dunya to her. And how a day, subhanAllah, the world has changed. The women are only running after money. And a lot of men are also doing the same. They're running after wealth and money and dunya wherever they can find it. Anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.